welcome back to Game Drop Zone's Game of the Year Deliberations with Best Narrative. My name is Kyle Schumann, your name is Matthew Kershaw. I almost forgot to introduce us. What does what does Best Narrative mean, Kyle Schumann? Well, Best Narrative, this is when I pull up a Wik- Wikipedia entry on what narrative means. Uh, I, I've never got that. Like, I, I don't know how many feminist, feminist frequency videos you watch, but I've never got why you'd bother pulling up like a dictionary definition off feminism say and putting it on screen oh, like no. it seems it seems like who's benefiting from that you know well i mean you get a narrative as a spoken or written account of connected events a story yeah also privilege anyway Fuck hell. let's uh let's talk about video games and the best of them uh and the worst of them in the case of this list yep um I think there's really interesting talks about here because, like, when we're talking about narrative, I guess we're talking about the direction the main story goes, maybe the side writing, the quality of the writing. Like, you know, we talk about best game, best best looking, best sound. It's dead easy, isn't it? Yeah. Like, well, all the visual things link into into looking. Whereas, like, narrative is, I put it in here this year, and we didn't have it last year because, like, I respect game writing a lot. It's a great deal of what I like about games, and you can reflect that in my reviews and shit. Yeah. So I thought we should have a category which. Uh, Acknowledges that equal with the other, the other facets of a game. The the narrative is for this section. It's more about the story and the adventure that you go on throughout the game. Yeah, there's there's some really interesting ones in here. Like some of them are. Let's just go down this list then, shall we? Okay. Uh, first game on this list, in no particular order, is Bloodborne, uh, an RPG with not a lot of, not a lot of direction, I guess. Uh, you're just sort of dropped in this world of these, like, as, an, as a hunter. But it, you, it, the way you learn about the world, you may learn nothing, or, like, you can go through that entire game without picking up a series, you know, a single piece of thread of lore. But then when you get bits of it, you know, like, over the course of playing that game for the 30 hours, of it, a lot of that's on video on this website, and you should never watch it, because <laughs> it is the worst. Uh, you sort of like pick up on like things happening in the world, and you can read more about them. And it's just a wonderful interlinked system. So and that yeah. game's quite different in terms of how it delivers its story, and I think that's a big part about why I liked it so much. On number two, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Three, <laughs> which is insane from a story perspective. It's like uh, you know the Black Ops games are like they've had some good, so they've had some bad story. Black Ops One was great. Black Ops Two was amazing. Yes, I agree on the second one, but the first one was it was absolutely trash. This get, this one is insane. I can't wait till we dive into this. Uh, the game's fucking weird, and I don't know that it's good, but it's weird. Uh, number three, we have Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Yep, that's uh, uh, an interesting thing to talk about. Yeah, it's got holes. Let's say it's also got a non-finished story. Yes, that's the really interesting part. Uh, and yeah, The Witcher Three: Wild Hunt. Um, that game has really interesting writing. I actually didn't like the main quest at all. Really, it's got its good parts, but it's more about your interactions with characters and their stories that I liked so much. It has got a such fetus great... child you have to kill. 10 out of 10, best game. Yeah, you're stabbing this fetus kid. Yeah, you, you do so much mutilation to kids in that game. It's, it's really quite fantastic. You stab a fetus, you throw a baby in an oven. <laughs> it's um, Those it damn Polish places. game developers... It's, the, there's some really good side stories. That's what makes that game good. Like, the main quest is whatever, but it takes you on adventures to meet people. Like, you must have heard of the Bloody Baron. Yes. Uh, and his, like, he's the fetus story, for example. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned this earlier. We're going to spoil the shit out of these games. Uh, if that isn't clear, if you didn't listen to yesterday's podcast. Uh, we are spoiling all of these video games in some yes, form or are. another. Uh, so, yeah, like, he's the fetus child story, and he's, like, super interesting. Anyway, let's carry on this list. Fallout 4. Your son is the head of the Institute. Also, he's Morgan Freeman. There you go. See, every time we mention Fallout 4, I'm just going to spoil the ending to that. Yeah, uh, Fallout's interesting because Bethesda traditionally have the worst storytelling experience ever I got, in RPG. I'm not lying, I got 48 hours into the game before I got to the Institute, and I forgot who Sean was, and I forgot that I was looking for my son this entire time. See, to me, it was like a, everything I did was against the backdrop of I just need to be looking for Sean. I need to be doing this for Sean. Like I was totally bought into the idea. Really? Yeah. I mean, I was role. Pl- I was one of the most role playing experiences I've had in a while. It was Fallout Four. Uh, I was all about that shit. Like even building up my house, you know, my my settlement, or whatever. 
Like, oh, I have to rebuild Sanctuary Hill. Oh, not Sanctuary Hills. Sanctuary Hills? Sanctuary. Sang- yeah, but it's, yeah, whatever the name of the street was. Like, I had to rebuild this place for when I go get Sean and have this society ready for him and stuff. It was, yeah, I was way into that uh, story. Wow. It was, um, I was too busy building my Shingeki no Kyojin style walls around Red Rocket. That game isn't on this list because that game has no story. It just retells the anime series. Yep. Uh, which is a shame, but we will talk about that in a future podcast. Spoilers. Yeah, we will. And then our final game, which isn't really a game, but it has got a lot of narrative and it's really good, is Star Wars The Old Republic Knights of the Fallen Empire. Uh, but that game didn't come out this year. This is an expansion. Yeah, it, this, is, this is why it's in this list and it is not in best game. Also, it's not finished. It's episodic. Well, then it can't win. But it's got really good writing. But it can't win because it's not finished. Oh, god damn it! I'll kill we you. We already agreed the Metal Gear can't win because that's not finished. <laughs> yes, but I, I guess we haven't had that discussion on the podcast, though, have we? Uh, but you're okay, right. Let's talk, Metal Gear. Metal Let's talk Gear about Metal Gear. Metal Gear was a great 60-hour adventure, and then you get to Chapter 2, and it all goes downhill, and it's like, oh, this is where Konami pulled the money. money. That mission on the quarantine platform. Holy that is shit. the one good part of uh, chapter two. Chapter two, yeah. yeah it's, it's the one so redeeming good. thing. Oh, it's really good. I I love that mission a lot. It is, yeah. That game's good because it, I wish I wish that game was finished, and I wish it was exactly as. Good. I don't think it is. Like I know, old statement I know, but you know, like you don't want to say no. Kojima couldn't be happy with how that game turned out, but like I wish that game was exactly as I think Kojima envisaged it, which was like yeah. complete and finished because. The parts that are done well in that game are so fucking good. Like he, he makes it scary. You know, like even in the in the hospital at the beginning, like hiding beneath the uh, beds, the beds. Like such a fucking good scene. And like there's so much of that, and it wraps around in a really good way. We talked about quiet yesterday. Yeah, uh, really interesting story stuff going on, but they never finish it. It never ends. It's the problem. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, and then what does end is the word. Like, the game ends four times, but it doesn't actually end ever. You know, there's like four points where you could say, you know, this was an ending. Like, you know, like the skull face murder scene or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but they're not. Such a shame. That game should have been the best. It should. I think it was like our most anticipated game last year, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And rightfully so. I mean, that game was good. It was just flawed. incomplete. Yeah. So sad. So I think yeah. we both agree that game can't win. Yeah, what about Star Wars since that also yeah. is not finished? It's not fi- it's not finished in a different way though. Like this game is yeah. really good, it's just episodic. So nine episodes are right now. That game is all story. Uh you know how like the you know the rest of the game is like a lot of story in the MMO. This is barely an MMO anymore. There's like a couple of areas where like other people can drop in to help you kill people, but it's all about the story. So like a two hour episode will be like an hour and a half story, say in about thirty minutes combat maybe. Yeah. It's almost like an adventure game in that sense. And uh, it's just so good. It's so much. It's almost like better than the recent Star Wars movie in a weird way, you know, for like in terms of expanding the Star Wars lore in its own direction. Uh, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, I guess it's not over yet, so we could wrap up in a really shit way. Uh, what else is on here? We have. Um... Do you want to explain Call of Duty Black Ops 3? Yeah, that game is fucking weird. That game's all about like uh, having implants that take over your vision, basically. It, when uh, so it, it's like you. When like the original trailer came out, I was like, "Oh my god, it's a new Deus Ex game!" But then they were just like, "No, it's not." No, but it is super shame. cyberpunk. Yeah, but uh, it's not it's Deus Ex. I thought it was going to be like Deus Ex, and I was super interested. I mean, I don't think the last Deus Ex game was all that amazing, but there you go. No, this game's weird. So this game, uh, fuck, like, where do you begin? This game has, like, so many conspiracies laid on top of conspiracies and shit. Yeah. Um, so you're, like, a super soldier who gets your arms and legs ripped off at the start of that game. You're just a normal soldier, and then you get caught by a robot, and this fucking robot snaps your arm in front of your face in first isn't, person. Isn't that the opening to Advanced Warfare, where you play the first mission and your arms get blown off? And then, uh, what's his face? Uh, you, you Kevin Spacey arm, gives you? you robot arms. Yeah, you lose one arm to a door in that game, don't you? On the helicopter. Oh, yeah. Or, like, the the VTOL in the middle of the street, you know? You know. This game is different. You lose all your limbs and get the... Sh- that, that, this robot is fucking hitting you with your own arm. It's, uh, it's fucking really gruesome and kind of insane. But pretty good, you know? 
there's like some PTSD moments of when you run into a robot and have like a slight flashback to when you fucking lost all your limbs. But it's it's a really good beginning anyway. And then you yeah you turn into this robot person with like you're sort of half in like a cyber in universe sort of thing. Like you're running simulations inside your own head, which obviously ties in as you'd expect later to the own game when you're like countering this basically this AI, this sort of like malicious AI made up of human minds. Uh, that's sort of like taking over you. It's in your mind. It's like infecting everything. Yeah. It, but it's got its own personality, but it's just like made up of all these hurt people from a laboratory because they all died. And like over all of this, there's like this weird sort of like meditation undertone of like people talking about imagining yourself in a crystal forest or an icy forest. It's fucking weird. Like it's as bad as I'm describing it really poorly, but it really is that poorly told. Wow. But it's kind of like, you get to the end of it and you're like, I don't know if that was the best game I've ever played or the worst. Like, it's so weird because it's like, you get to a stage where you're talking to this woman in cyberspace and she's infected, you're getting infected with this AI's personality sort of thing. Right. And you're in the house from World at War zombies. And there's these Nazi zombies piling through the... I, I fucking hated this part, but it's like, this is kind of like where it goes, so... And it's like these zombies pulling through the windows as you're talking to the cyber woman about like renouncing the AI. And then like the whole world shakes and you're following her through a World War II battlefield, but like you're just walking up like 90 degree angles up walls and shit. Wow. It's fucking weird. It's so like it's so out there. And I don't think it worked on me. But like you sh- I wish you'd played that game for to like just to see your reaction to that story, because it's fucking insane. Uh and then at some point you're walking through like a fucking like organic part of this beast shooting thing. It's fucking weird. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it's bizarre. Uh, but it doesn't make any sense. Like it kind of makes sense, but not really. I feel like somebody had their feel like, you know, if Kojima really flopped on a game, I think <laughs> it would be that game. Uh, yeah, I don't, that might be the winner. I don't know. Yeah, just because it's so insane. Yeah, but I don't think it's good is the problem. Like, if we hadn't got the... If we just had most of the weirdest narrative, then yeah, absolutely. Well, then what does that leave us? That leaves us with, like, uh, what, Fallout 4 and Bloodborne we haven't talked about? Uh, speaking of weird narratives, yeah, Bloodborne, like, we spoke a bit before about, like, how that delivers its narrative. It's being, like, a very... Uh, you reading through item descriptions and stuff, which isn't obviously a great method, but it works in that environment that is so... Uh, that game's about, like, a fucking woman's menstrual blood, basically. Like, you... I can't never do that game justice because there's so much lore and I haven't played the recent expansion. But, like, go and dig up a... Uh, there's a really great Kotaku article breaking down all the... the sort of, like, behind-the-scene theories going on in that game. Uh, it's super interesting. Yarnum is super, such an interesting place. Like, the way the Chalice Dungeons tie into what that city is. And then you've got that... You know the woman... Uh, there's a woman in a bride's outfit anyway, and I think the whole game is like the blood you're drinking to survive, because that game's obviously all about blood. It's like her period blood, and I think she's the woman who's called Yarnum. And then there's yeah. like the whole moon cycle thing. It's insane. And then that game ends. That game has the fucking best last ending. So the last boss is like an optional dude. He's like the first hunter, the first one of you, and you cannot fight him. Uh, which I didn't. It's either like you fight him to survive in your current body, and like you, know, you fight him and kill him to survive, but then this massive demon descends from the moon that's getting closer to the earth. And <laughs> I think that will almost always kill you unless you've eaten three or four umbilical cords, like demonic, you know, fucking period blood covered demonic umbilical cords throughout the game at random places. Unless you've eaten them, then you can't beat this last demon creature that just kills you. Wow. Uh, or, like, they're the, they're the quote, good endings, because you obviously have to beat the last boss to win. But the actual best ending from your character's perspective is letting the last hunter, the, the dude, yeah, somebody beginning with G anyway, is letting him kill you because then you wake up because the whole thing was a dream. So then your hunter wakes up in the streets alive in real world. It's, uh, and that was the ending I had because I spoiled it for myself because I needed a guide for that game because it was fucking really hard. Yeah, uh, and yeah. So, like, the worst ending, the shittiest cop out ending, is in fact the best ending from the narrative perspective. 
it's a it's really interesting that universe i really want to play the expansion i just i forgot about it when it came out um, yeah and yeah fallout 4 uh, which we spoke about a bit in the best character section i really like the main narrative of that game i i have big problems it's a bethesda game and you fucking you piss around for like 20 hours before even remembering the main story exists i mean you did i was like Everybody all about does. I was I was pissing around, but I was pissing around trying to build a better world for Sean, <laughs> who happened to be Morgan Freeman, who happened to be an asshole who thought it was okay to like abduct kids. Hey man, the Spartans. That's what that happened to them. Look yeah, because Halsey's a fucking war criminal. Halo yep. Five does not get best story, by the way. Yeah, I noticed it wasn't on this list. I still haven't even played the story, so Are I can't you argue. Need to. Uh, it also was only like five hours long or something, but like you need to play that game because it ends in a. Halo 6 could have the best story, let's say that. How about that? I've heard that Halo 5 ends in the same way as, like, Star Wars 5 ended, where it's like, okay, there's clearly going to be another one. Yeah, like, speaking of Star Wars, the the new Force Awakens movie, that ends in possibly the best way, because it resolves one thing, yet doesn't feel the need to, like... It's a cliffhanger, but not, you know, that's a cliffhanger that's good. Halo 5 is a cliffhanger that is bad. And, like, the actual, like, unless you've read all the books, you won't understand why the ending it does have is, like, good in any way. Uh, it's really poor, and, like, the pacing of that game is just shot to shit. Yeah. But anyway, we're not talking about that. Fallout 4. So you're not feeling Fallout 4 for narrative, then? No. I think The Witcher 3 has some really interesting stories, but unlike everyone else who played it, I'm not blown away by the most of it. Like, I hated a lot of that game for, like, gameplay reasons. And, like, there's a part in the middle of the main quest where you're just, like, hunting dandelion for, like, literally 20 hours. <laughs> and it's the worst thing. Uh, I fucking... Yeah. But, like, parts of that game are really good. Like, you know, the, the series storyline. Uh, the ending was the worst thing ever. I fucking hated it really badly. Like, Geralt just sort of fucking gave up on life and can't get himself killed in the middle of the woods and there's nothing I could do to stop it. It was, like, the shittiest thing ever. Uh, it was... Yeah, I... I don't feel that game for best narrative. For me, it comes down to Bloodborne. I would say Knights of the Old Republic, but I, like the game, the thing's not over. It could go in any direction. It could end badly. It could end good. So I guess we can't talk about that game here. Yeah. Or like you know, Black Ops for novelty value. <laughs> I think Bloodborne is fucking fascinating, and it's told in a really interesting way. Yeah. Uh, I would say the same about her story, but it's like. I, I, you know, delving into this world with deep lore is more interesting than just one woman's problems to me, which I guess sounds kind of shitty when you put it that way, but that's why that game isn't on this list. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's it's probably Bloodborne, unless you want to throw Black Ops a bone for being the fucking weirdest. No, I never played Black Ops, and it wasn't the story that I wanted. No, yeah. Uh, nobody wanted that story. No one. No. It was a... Uh... Check out the review, I guess. It's, it's fucking yeah. such a weird thing. Uh, so are we okay with Bloodborne? Yeah, I'm okay with Bloodborne. Well, I think Bloodborne has a f- fascinating universe, and it's our best narrative of 2015. Yep. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another best of. I guess these are like the audio form of a listicle. I fucking hate listicles. Why don't we make listicles? Because, I mean, I went, I, I, so I watched The Force Awakens the other day, and there's like, something blows up, and it's not clear what it is. Okay? It's like... That's super skeptical because I don't want to spoil it, but like something blows up, it's not clear what it is. I went on to try to find out what it was, and all I could find was like every website with a 10 listicles about Star Wars The Force Awakens and no information. It's the <laughs> fucking worst. I was so pissed off with the way that, like, I, maybe it was just what I was searching for, but every fucking movie website seemed to be nothing but listicles. Of course, gotta get that cra- cash grab. But it was like listicles just spoiling the movie in like the most blatant way, not even giving you information that you wouldn't already know. Spoiler alert, a stormtrooper gets shot. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that game's, that movie's really good. That movie's best narrative of 2015. There you go. Hey, there we go. All right. But also Bloodborne. Yeah, I guess that too. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with another one. Uh, but yeah, uh, see you soon. All right, ciao.